Hello, welcome back to my studio. I'm Tim Packer. This is another another one of our ongoing series on composition, the, the way that we choreograph that dance for the viewer's eye. What I'm going to talk to you about today is balance. Uh, within the four corners of our painting, we need it to be balanced. Objects within our painting have a visual weight, and we have to play these things off against these other, each other so that our painting appears in balance. So if we go down to my page, um, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if we consider within any given painting, if, uh, if we consider that there's like a fulcrum in the center of the painting uh, from left to right in the center there, and there's like a balance, a teeter-totter there, and we always want it to look like the teeter-totter would be in balance. And so what we have here, this is out of balance because this shape is much bigger than this one. This is like the two kids on the teeter-totter. You know, this kid's going to go flying through the air. So we can balance it by making the shapes equal, but then that gets very boring. Another way that we can balance it is, so objects have a visual weight based on their size, but also based on the contrast that defines them. So if we come in here with a really dark value, even though this shape is much smaller, because it is so much more contrast, uh, sorry, so the contrast in its value is so much more, then that kind of evens out that kind of push and pull um, of one shape to the other. So if we look at it, we'll go inside these little squares here, and we'll, we'll talk about other ways that influences how strong a shape reads and how strong its weight is. So we have a circle here. I'm going to come in here with a, a another circle. Now let's do this the same size. So now they're the same size, both defined by a hard edge, but this seems much heavier, like the painting wants to go down that way. Well, another way we can affect how strongly an object reads and its visual weight is the edge by which it's defined. So if we soften the edge of this one, and we soften the value by which it's defined, so now it's not a, it's not a light value against white, it's a dark value against a, a somewhat lighter value with a soft edge. Now all of a sudden this shape is actually shouting a little louder than that because it's just totally one hard, it's hard edged all the way around whereas this shape here kind of bleeds softly into it. So one of the ways we increase a, the visual weight of an object is, is by increasing the hardness of the edge um, and one way we can soften it is, or diminish it, is by softening that edge. Now another, another, um, another way that we can adjust the weight of an object is by color. So we have these two objects here now, uh, similar size, two different colors, um, they both are attracting about the same amount of attention, but if we come in and we echo the orange in a no number of spots, now that green is attracting a lot of attention and it's only you feel there's, there's a pull to go down this way um, because that green is so different than everything else on the page. Um, so one way we could, we could adjust that is by echoing the green, as we talked about in our earlier one, um, in terms of um, the unity of the painting. So if we put just little touches of that green and mix it into the orange over here, we can bring some of the attention back here and bring this into balance. And how much of that green do we need to show? Well, the answer is enough. In, and it's something that you actually feel in terms of this, this idea of the, the visual weight. Now the painting is kind of back in balance. There's more interest being drawn here. Um, but because of the difference in color, that affects the weight. And last but not least, I shouldn't say last, we still got a few more. One thing that also affects the weight, just as if we were on our fulcrum here, the further out you go, 
the more weight it has. So I could have a small shape close to the center, it's not going to have nearly as much weight as the similar shape out to the side. Now that I've put this out here, it looks like this is heavier. The painting wants to go this way. So how do we adjust that? Well, one thing we can do is if we make the shape in the middle of our painting bigger, so that's increased its visual weight, now it kind of balances off this piece that's out to the side. And how much of this do we have to do? Again, it's getting back to that term of enough. It's something, what's really important is to understand this concept in your paintings and you feel that whole idea of balance. Um, and so what are the ways, let's talk about the hierarchy of things that define shapes. The thing that we recognize first is value. So as we can see, these dark, dark shapes against a light background with a hard edge, that's one of, that's the most readable thing. So our eye sees value first, so a little contrast between light against dark. Then it sees color. So if we take our orange and some green, and we'll do it with a similar value, we notice first dark against light, then we notice difference in color, then we notice pattern. So for example, if I had a bunch of vertical stripes next to a horizontal, these are all the same value, all the same color, but we recognize the difference in pattern. And texture is something like this. It's a bunch of dots. Now when it's small enough, it's a texture. When texture becomes big enough, then it becomes a pattern. So if this was, if you were zoom, zoomed way out on this, this could be a herringbone pattern. Uh, or texture, but as it gets bigger, then it becomes pattern. Now there's one more type of shape that we're going to talk about that draws the eye um, more than any other, aside from all these other things, and that's called the mnemonic shape. And that's a shape that means something to us, where our eye recognize it as something. So for example, we've got a bunch of, of rectangles and circles and squares on here, but if I just do put some of those together, now let's do a rectangle with a triangle with another little rectangle in here. At its simplest, our eye recognizes this as a little house. Because this means something to us, it's not just an abstract shape. That draws the eye even more um, than other shapes of a similar value or uh, value contrast or color contrast. So mnemonic shapes are things that we recognize and there's a hierarchy within mnemonic shapes. The thing that, so anything that's man-made or architectural, if you're looking in a landscape, that's going to draw the eye, uh, even though it might not have the same degree of contrast defining the actual shape itself. And then we move into living things. So if there's a deer or a rabbit or a fox, that's going to draw the eye more than a leaf or a tree or something else that's uh, defined by the same contrast. Then we get into people. People are the most important thing in our lives. Um, and we're hardwired to recognize the silhouette of a person. So if there's a person in your painting, it's going to draw the eye more and it's going to have more visual weight. And then finally, if we can actually see the person's face and particularly the eyes, then that is going to have a hugely disproportionate degree of visual weight and you have to take that into, into account. And how, how do you tell if your painting is out of balance? Well, if your painting is out of balance, what often happens is no matter how you adjust it on the wall, it'll always look like it's kind of on an angle because if you get it perfectly balanced, or sorry, perfectly horizontal, because the painting is out of balance, it'll look like one side is pulling the other down. If you adjust that so that it looks balanced, then it'll be out of kilter with your walls or your door jams or your window edges or what have you. So um, yeah, you have, to, you have to always keep this into consideration. Um, and it's something that we feel, as a, a, you feel it as a visual weight um, each object has in your painting. So we can define them first of all by value with a hard edge. Uh, then as we soften edges, it diminishes the contrast and the visual weight. Then we go by color, then we have pattern, and then we have texture. So keep your paintings in balance just like your life. I'm Tim Packer. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.
Well, thanks for joining me. I hope you found uh, this information helpful. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. I also appreciate the likes and the comments. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover that I haven't, um, please uh, give me comments. I'll take that into consideration. And I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Um, that's it for now. I'm Tim Packer. Bye-bye.